pleasure uh, to be able to bring this to you. Uh, Gate io obviously gate.io the exchange has been around in the space for a very very long time is you now bringing you some of the best trading education that's available out there if i do say so myself and one of the things i would certainly say about uh gate is that it's um you, you guys gotta remember that these are the people that are putting money into making you better as a trader and giving you a better experience and that is a really really big deal in a world where exchanges continue to pop up everywhere gate is one of the ones that are willing to invest in their clients now my name is craig cobb uh, i am a trader of 15 years I, I, i've pretty much i'm 36 years there you go you know how old i am and i'm i'm a very bald 36 years old <laughs> But uh, I've um, I've been trading. Look honestly, I guess kind of my whole adult working life. There's like there's not much else. Well, there, there literally is nothing else that I've um that I've put time into. Uh, realistically, I mean I've done some work on building sites for my father's company. I've done little odd, odd bits and bobs. But uh, as a man, I have committed my entire life to uh, learning about the markets and. And that's not crypto, of course. You know, you can work that way. I've been trading for 15 years. You know, crypto's not been around for 15 years. Um, I started by trading uh, equities in the UK. I, I lived in London for six years, and I, uh, that's why I can't say one. I, I say one, O N E, as in like I just won the Sydney to Hobart, W O N. I get a lot of crap for that. And you're more than welcome to pile it on. <laughs> But my, my bottom line is that I, I've been trading for my adult life. Okay, it's it, it's what I know. Uh, what I teach is what I know. And there's going to be certain elements throughout uh, this experience, this course, this program, whereby I'm going to probably say things are useless that, that you may use. Now, I want to make it very, very clear. I'm certainly not here to insult anybody. I'm not here to upset anybody. I'm not here to do anything but to help you become a better trader. That is my objective in my business, tradercob.com. And that's my objective for this four part series. And I will say one more thing. What Gate has put together is not just a four part course. Okay. It's not just a full trading strategy where you get a written checklist that you can literally tick things off. So no more thinking, no more worrying, no more um not understanding how things work now i'm going to teach you exactly what you need to know to trade this particular strategy let me repeat that i'm going to teach you exactly what you need to know to learn this particular strategy i am not going to teach you everything that you need to know about the markets why because i don't know and you know what when i did set out to do that Guess what happened to me? I lost money. Not only did I lose money, more importantly, I lost time. Because when we go to school or university or whatever, we tend to be taught that a complex procedure, a complex uh, item gives you a better score if you can work that out. And and that's a human condition. It's not truth when it comes to trading. I've done this for a long time. The first, oh, gee whiz. I mean, I, I could probably honestly say for the first four years of my career, I wasn't much good. But I can tell you that the first two years of my trading career, I did lose money. I, I lost money. I'm sure there are plenty of people that are on this particular event that have also lost money. And you might be sitting there going, well, trading, it would be better off if I just was a hodler. I get it. But it's not true. It's not true at all. For those that might have, and I'm sure there's probably not too many in here considering this is a trading event, but I know there are people out there on, you know, on your crypto Twitter and Facebook groups and Telegram that say that trading is just gambling. The trading, you'd be better off just hodling. No, I, I don't believe that at all. I think that is some pretty bum advice. I think it's terrible to think that way. And let me caveat that with this. I'm going to give you an example. 
right now. And I'm going to tell a lot of stories throughout this four part series. You're going to get to know me and I say some weird stuff. <laughs> it's just who I am and how I do things, all right? You're going to get a full slice of the Craig Cobb cake. Hopefully you like it. I'm not offensive and I'm a nice person. I encourage questions and open dialogue. I will answer your questions. Please do not hold back, all right? If I can't answer the question, I'm not going to be a politician. I'll just tell you, I don't know. No, I don't need to know. It's not part of what I do. But what I can say is this. Those that say that hodling is the way to do things just don't know how to trade. It's that simple. Now, what I'm going to teach you, and in conjunction with Gate.io Exchange, you're going to be able to learn a technique, a methodology, or a strategy, as I, as I call it, whereby whether the market goes up, or down, you are going to have the skill set to be able to profit. Now, many people don't understand how important that is. Now, let me take you back to 2008 or 2007, really. Uh, I was trading equities, indices, commodities. Uh, I don't think at that stage I was trading bonds. No, I don't think I was. Uh, <laughs> the GSC is what I'm getting at. All right, the GSC happened, and whilst a lot of people lost a huge amount of money, and it was horrible, it was terrible, it really was disgusting what, what occurred during that period, I was able to make an awful lot of money. And, and during that period, that was really what I would say made me as a trader. There was about a, oh, probably the most money was made in the three months, uh, but it was a six-month period where I really, really did makes a very, very good returns. And this is in traditional markets. Now, traditional markets tend to go up for a long time and pull back very hard and fast in the modern era. And that's where the liquidity, sorry, the volatility comes from. And the reason that I trade crypto full time now is, and I, look, I don't, I tell you right now, I do not, <laughs> I do not trade foreign exchange stocks, bonds, or commodities anymore. I can recognize a trade. I can see where there's opportunity, but I don't mess with those markets because I've got the opportunity, and so do you, with cryptocurrency, to have the, the, the volatility that is up and down, just as spectacular. And this is what I'm here to teach you. I don't want you to think, I don't want you to get analysis paralysis. And what I'm gonna teach you is a checklist-based trading strategy. We're gonna to start today with high probability trading. Okay, what I'm teaching today is the foundations for you to put together a plan. And don't get me wrong, every business has a business plan. And if you're out there trading, you don't have a plan, you can't write down what you're doing day in and day out, then you are not likely to have success. I'm not saying you need to put in the hours that I do when I trade these markets. And I've got to be honest, <laughs> I'm running a business. I, I don't trade all that often. I'm very good at knowing when to trade and you're gonna learn the same thing. So without any further ado, welcome to this four part series put on by Gate Exchange. <coughs> Sorry, you went down the wrong hole. Please do ask me questions. I am here to help you. My objective is for you to be a better trader, okay? Before we get stuck into the material, tonight is going to be about building those foundations, giving you the, the start of a plan, the start of something special. And if you're here because you want to get rich quick, hey, look, good luck to you. Good luck to you. But without a foundational support system, without an understanding of how you've made your money, you'll do what many did after 2017. Many people made millions during the 2017 bull run on alts and Bitcoin for that matter. And then what did they do? They watched their portfolio dwindle away to nothingness. You don't want to be in that position because I hope we see another 2017-esque run. You, my job is to educate you to keep that profit, to multiply that profit. And that's what I'm going to bloody well do. First and foremost, risk warning and disclaimer, ladies and gentlemen, this is not to tip you. This is not to tell you what to do. You will never see that from me, although we will be putting out watch list videos. You will see scans of the gate products, a number of the gate products, not all, 
but a number of the better ones, the ones that are trending and whatnot. I'm not here to tell you what to do. This is an educational presentation. My objective here is to help you to become the best trader that you can be. If you don't agree with that, then please do leave the webinar now because, well, regulation. <laughs> okay, let's keep on moving through and uh, and get stuck into this. Welcome, welcome, welcome to you all. And please listen, if you want to share the link to get into this, please do. It'll be there. And I want more people on this. So part one, high probability trading. We're going to understand the creation of a plan and going to put in some structure. Structure. I, I look at trading like I look at building a house. And what, why, why do I draw that analogy? My father is a retired builder. I used to work on his building sites from the age of 12. Not because my father's a slave laborer, but because I wanted to make some bucks. And a house is built in a certain way. And we know that. One of the issues that I see in trading is that many people come into the space, open up a trading account and start throwing money around without having an actual understanding. Of course they lose, they lose money. And then they turn around and say, trading, oh, you can't make money trading, it's bad, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? People that jump into a jumbo jet have never flown a plane before and they start to try and play with the controls. These people don't get a chance to complain. Do you know why? Because they die because a plane takes off and it crashes back into the ground, they don't have a chance to complain. Now, trading is not going to kill you, but the analogy is so on point that so many people find it so easy to open up a trading account without any experience, knowledge, understanding, planning, and they fail and they blame trading. It's not trading's fault. It's your fault. And we're going to learn that. So we're going to lay those foundations. We're going to create that plan tonight. And what I ask of you, I ask of you to have a notepad. I also ask of you to have your snipping tool on your computer, whatever it may be, PC or Mac. Work out how to take screenshots and work it out bloody quick. It's, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really bad with technology. I know I read a chart, I'm bad with technology. I encourage you, by the way, this will be recorded. So if you wanna just watch through it this time and you wanna watch it again and take your screenshots, be my guest. I've got no qualms at all about you capturing this content so that you can learn from it. If there are certain slides that resonate with you, capture those slides. I will at times say to you, hey, listen, take a screenshot of this, you know, take a screenshot of this one, this is one you need. But I've got no problem. My objective is not to hold things from you, it's to give to you, it's to help you be better. In week two, next week, we're gonna look at mastering price action. And the way I sort of describe this is, let's say we wanna bake a chocolate cake. First and foremost, we need the ingredients, don't we? We'll, we'll touch on a couple of ingredients tonight or today, wherever you are in the world. But we are here to essentially provide you with the ingredients. Without the ingredients, you can't therefore go and practice the recipe. So I'm going to give you some ingredients. And then in part, th so that's in part two, my apologies. Part three, it's going to be the recipe. And guess what in part three, who does the work? Not I, said the wolf. It's going to be you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to push you. It's up to you. I want to see you make mistakes. And that's fine. Mistakes are great. Mistakes are golden. Without mistakes, we cannot learn and progress. Week four, we're going to look at risk management. We're going to look at a mindset, how to keep yourself in a good mindset. And when you're not in a good mindset, what do you do? It's so key. It's so important. We'll look at routine tonight as well, which will tie in part four. We'll look at the risk management mindset and your progress. Just because you've done a course and you learn a particular strategy does not mean you're going to have unbelievable success. It's about how you develop yourself moving forward to make you better. So guys, I wanna know right now, before I click onto the next slide, I wanna know, do you know how to use this go to webinar functionality? If you do, please type into the question box, yes. I want to see that you know how to ask me a question because like I said, this is not a one ended presentation. This is a presentation whereby I encourage you to ask me questions. Um, I know this subject extraordinarily well. I know what I'm doing and this is my strategy. <laughs> um, I know what's going on. 
I want you to ask me. We have this one and a half to two hours, likely about one and a half to two tonight, right? Get as much out of me as you can. Gate have paid for me to be here, all right? You've got me for this time. Please, I can give you as much as you ask for. So use the hell out of me. All righty, so let's keep moving on. From there, we're going to go into more and more and more. What's required of you to be a success? I'm going to cover some of the mistakes. Now, you're going to make them anyway. But I'm going to point out what these mistakes are. So maybe if you miss one of these mistakes, great. I've saved you some money and I've helped you progress a lot faster. We're going to look at why we trade with rules. The difference between good trades and bad trades. How to think like a trader, i.e. probabilities. We'll cover that tonight. And how to raise your orders, manage your risks and emotions now i tell you one thing i will make this very very clear to you guys um i can present okay i can present and it might seem for some of you um uh, how do you access the recordings later david no dramas mate you will be the the gate team will let you know not a problem whatsoever and if you have any problems please go to my website tradercob.com hit the question box in the corner bottom right and if you can't find the answer through gate, I will make sure that my team will help you out with that. There is no problem with that at all. Good question. There's the answer. So listen, guys, I guess, you know, when it comes to this, I, you know, you, I, I, I've been on events before where the person that was presenting was quite clearly uh, a presenter and, and possibly not the person they claim that they were. Okay. So I just want to address that up front. I, I can present. I enjoy presenting. I enjoy helping other people. I, I genuinely, God honest truth is, I absolutely bloody love it. Um, just because I might be able to be entertaining and, and, and present, like, it sounds like I'm blowing my own horn. I'm not. I'm just letting you know, just because I can present doesn't mean that I don't know how to trade. Trading came first. The presenting side of it came after. So please don't, you know, I'm, I'm just talking to my own psyche in, in this particular slide saying, you know, look, um, yeah, I can actually do both, and that's why the business has had success. I, I love teaching and simplifying what I do, okay? I absolutely love it. And I'll tell you right now, mate, um, these strategies that I've taught, you, you're getting a full one of the three that I use. These weren't written for you. Not to be offensive. Uh, I wrote these strategies for myself with a mentor that I worked with for many years because it was the way that it helped me to get the best out of myself. So yeah, let's do this together. Look, it's gonna take one session, I think. I think after this, you're probably gonna work out that I'm not a bad bloke. I do know what I'm talking about. And I want your investment. I want your investment of time into what we do because I can give you absolutely everything, but I've got to get through what I call the bullshit barrier. There is a radar that we all have. Is this guy full of it or not? I, I, I wanna break that down for you. So please do give me the time to do that and I will prove it to you and you will feel comfortable and we'll get those results. So what's gonna be covered in this series, technical analysis, the myths. Like I said, I'm not gonna teach you what not to use, I'm gonna teach you what is to be used, I'm gonna show you a bunch of rubbish and then I'm gonna smash it on the head like a popper mole, sorry, <laughs> whack a mole. We're gonna look at detailed trend analysis, moving averages in detail, what, why, and how. We'll look at indicator analysis, the myths and how to use them, because there's a lot of, uh, a lot of crap out there that people use. And I'll explain that as we go through. Support and resistance, the truest source of support and resistance. Of course, yeah, I might blow out a couple of minds when I do that part, but it's going to be fun. I'll teach you everything you know about candlesticks without spending $1,000 on a course or $50 on a book. There are three. End of story. Then I get rid of the actual trading strategy here. Now, what I'm trying to say is this. I'm sure that some of you have done trading courses. And I, you know, I've invested a bunch of money in doing things when I was at the, at the early stage. Um, I suppose my, my objective here is not just to tell, it's to teach. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to tell you how you should think. What I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to show things and then explain the underlying reasons for it 
okay now anyone can switch on their television and look at the news report for the next day but it takes someone who's got an interest to learn weather patterns i'm a fisherman i'm a i'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an ocean guy i love fishing i love spear fishing i love surfing out in the i love all the ocean stuff right that's i'm an australian dude that's what i've grown up doing i've learned weather patterns weather patterns when you learn it can tell you a whole lot more if you flick on the tv and it says tomorrow's going to be you know sunny 25 degrees celsius with a low of 14 degrees celsius uh with a possible chance of showers in the afternoon that tells you what could be but if you're someone like me and like you who are on this right now we look at things and go, okay, well, let's look at the bar charts. Let's look at, let, let's look at the pressure. Let's look at what's going on. We understand the underlying reason for that forecast. Now, I'm trying to teach you the underlying reasons. I'm not asking you to believe me. I am asking you to learn with me. Now, if at the end of this, you go, that was a waste of time. Fine. I've got no problem with that at all. But I'm going to try and teach you the underlying reasons and that's why we're going to focus on this we're going to focus on uh everything you need to know about candles but simplify things and we're going to simplify things here my objective is to make it easy for you to get it sorry make it really hard for you to get this wrong if it's easier to get right it's much harder to get wrong and that's where i live okay so 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 Who's it for? Anyone who's interested in learning about technical trading, anyone who wishes to get a bit of a leg up. I said leg up, not leg over. Anyone who's wishing to learn fast in this amazing market, and you're going to see a lot more detail um, about this market. It's it's absolutely off the chain. It's the best market in the world for traders. That's why I've dropped everything, and I am now invested entirely, not just in my investments, but in my business and in my time. All right. We're going to try and speed up that learning curve, and that's for you and Gates investing in you. And if you want to try and take my 15, look, I've been trading for 15 years, bought my first stocks when I was 16. But in all honesty, over that 15 years, in those first four years, I made the most mistakes anyone has. And over the last decade, I've made a ton of them. I don't make them as frequently anymore. I'll tell you the mistake that I do make the most, I think this year, 2020, as horrific as it has been, <laughs> oh, whoa, what a year, eh? um my objective was to think less and act more i left a lot of lot of money on the table last year because i thought every now and again you are never ever going to be better than the market stop thinking you are focus on probabilities and you'll be just fine and that's my focus and i want that to be your focus all right so rules-based trading if you want to make money all that sort of stuff you've got to focus on what you're going to do and look in the all in the absolute straight up honest truth um, i'll tell you right now the strategies that you're so the strategy that you're about to learn over this four-part series i didn't create it oh shock horror uh, most people will be out there they'll say that they created it. I, don't, I don't give two hoots about what everyone else says all right i do not care at all this strategy i've simplified I've, I've cut a lot of things out of it to make it more for me but i was taught by uh i've been very fortunate when i was in london i worked with um I worked with some great traders over there I, I got to spend time in new york working with some more great traders and these aren't these aren't your typical you know uh, goldman sachs or jp or whatever whatever these are actual you know, I was in a, I was in a circuit. I was in a um a group that that, that knew great traders that worked with their own bank. And I've I've never worked for a fund. I've I've run a fund. I uh, hated it. Absolutely hated it. I'm too I'm too um, concerned about other people uh, and their money than I am about my own. Right. So I didn't. I'm, I'm not in the fund management business. That's why I'm in this business. Right. But I'm here. I'm here for one simple reason: to bring forth what I've learned through my experiences i did not create this strategy i simplified this strategy the strategy comes from a man called nick mcdonald my mentor for six years lovely man kiwi of all people <laughs> nothing against kiwis it's uh yeah if you're australian you know if you're kiwi you know and you know there you go. <laughs> so it's not here. To, I'm, I'm not here to brag. I'm not here to be an ego driven person. I'm here to help deliver a message that I know works because I've been able to raise two. Well, I haven't raised them fully yet, but I've got two children. I live in Bondi Beach. 
I've got a great lifestyle and I love what I do. And what I do now is I trade, I invest, I build a business and I help people with that business. I'm so, so goddamn gifted. I'm so lucky. And I want to make sure that I give you my all, right? So let's go through a couple of these things here. Trading's about probabilities. That's it. You've got nothing else. Now, the reason I'm saying 10 years here, you might be going, well, hang on, you said 15 years before. That's right. But the last 10 years, I've not changed a damn thing of the strategy you're about to learn. The five years prior to that, you go, <laughs> I chopped and changed it quite a bit. And I failed. You'll learn that throughout this presentation. My objective here is to help you become better and consistent. Now, if you want to be consistent in your returns, then I'll tell you one thing you've got to have, consistency in your approach. Now, I know that seems like a very simple and logical thing to say. I also know that I've been in the coal face just like you. When you're at that coal face, and look, I'm going to use a lot of analogies, and the, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just let me know. I am a... Um, uh, pretty, I'm a very Aussie Australian, put it that way. I might not sound as Aussie because I might still have a bit of that English twang, uh, but I'm very Australian and I do speak in riddles sometimes. So if you, <laughs> if you need a hand, let me know and I'll clarify that stuff. But my, 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 my point is, is that often it's the simple stuff that works the best. You know, there'll be all these people ask me, oh, Craig, when are you going to do your advanced course? Why? Why? Sure, I could do an advanced course and I could sell it and make heaps of cash. But my objective is not just to make money. It's to help people to learn what I've learned. It's to pass that knowledge on. There's three strategies that I teach. You get one of them for nothing through Gate. There's nothing else, guys. There is nothing else. Consistent um, execution of these strategies or this particular strategy is going to be giving you a much more powerful step in the right direction for consistency in your results. Make no mistake, every business, every coach, every team, the LA Lakers won tonight, today, whatever it might have been. Do you think they had a game plan? Of course they did. They executed it. That's how we do things. Using a checklist strategy takes away the thinking process, takes away that emotion, takes away any form of subjectivity. And ladies and gentlemen, that is your eureka moment. Now, I don't know if you're able to have it now or if it's going to be at the end of this course or part two or part three or if it's going to be in two years' time. The journey's yours, but it's the truth. The sooner you work that out, the better off you're going to be. And it's my job to try and stuff that in your head as much as I possibly can. So thinking about probabilities. If you want to make money in trading, you need an edge. All right, so let me give you an example of this. I've taught a lot of, um, uh, I've taught a lot of people, but engineers, and if you are an engineer, please don't take this in a negative sense, because I also had some of my mentors now are engineers. Uh, engineers are typically the people that need to know why. That's what they're paid for. They need to know why th certain things will happen because they've got to get down to the mathematical equation, make sure the building stands up, the bridge doesn't fall down, yada, yada. Teachers are also quite difficult at times unless they open their mind and allow themselves to learn. I'll tell you who the best people are that I have experienced on a, on a um, percentage uh, basis of, um, how do I say this? Uh, the numbers that I've spoken to. Pilots. Why? Because pilots go through a checklist every single gosh darn dime they jump in a plane. They're ticking boxes left, right and centre. They're doing check this, check that, check this, check that, boom, boom, off we go. And thank goodness they do because most planes stay in the air. All right. Um, professional poker players have also proven to be very good traders because they take the emotion out and they understand probabilities. Probabilities. I'm going to try and make this as easy to get right as it can possibly be. So it's very difficult to get it wrong. See, I flip it the other way. I make it easy to get it right. I focus on the right, not the wrong. From there, we're going to focus on 100 trades. I want you to see your trading career is not one trade is going to make you, you know, your millions or, or change your life. It won't. I also want to make sure that one trade is not going to blow you out and cause you to be in despair. 
goes both ways. Now, the potential, the probability of the upside being upside potential, like is in profit, doesn't mean direction of market, being greater than the downside bow is in your favor because of the way that we manage risk. And you just hang out with me and we'll get there, all right? We'll get there. You don't know what trade's gonna be a winner. And here's, here's a big thing here, right? So you might find a trade that fits a bunch of the rules and you go, oh my goodness, this bad boy is absolutely off the chain. About as good a trade as you can possibly get. So do I risk 5% on this because it looks good? No, no. Because a great, the best trade technically in the world can still lose. It's not up to you to decide winners or losers. It's up to you to decide which has the highest probability. Then it's up to you to manage your risk. That is what trading is. And I'm sorry if I burst anyone's bubble. It doesn't need to be the most exciting thing in the world. And it shouldn't be. The less exciting it is, the better you're going to be. Now, it's, I know that's hard to understand when you start out because it's, it is pretty sexy. It is pretty fun. It does feel great. And you have a winner but it can also feel really shit house when you have a loser i want to try and level it out a bit for you and give you the tools that allow you to do that by yourself so let's do a little exercise let me get some water i want to um uh how do i say this i want to prove a point <laughs> i want to prove a point so You've all got a coin, you've all flipped a coin, you all understand there is a head and a tail and we're doing a fair toss, all right? A fair toss of a coin, there is a head and there is a tail, full stop, nothing else. So we know we got a 50% chance of it landing on a head and a 50% chance of it landing on a tail. Is everybody cool with that? Cool. Now, if the coin lands on heads, I'll give you $10. If the coin lands on tails, well, guess what? You got to cough up 10 to me. Now, if we flip this coin a hundred times, and look, let's be honest, the more times we flip this coin, the more that edge or that probability, it's not an edge actually, it's a probability, the more that probability of 50 50 will come back to us ending up making, guess how many dollars? Zip. We, you, do we understand that simple probability? And I don't mean to, I don't mean to make it seem like you're not intelligent people. I've, I've got to start at this point and we work through that. Does everybody make clear on the fact that they've got a 50, 50 reward to risk ratio, heads or tails. And if it's $10 that lands on heads and $10 that lands on tails, the more times we flip that coin, the more likely it is we end up with nothing. Is everyone cool with that? If we're not cool with that, then it's going to make the next section a little bit more difficult. So I just want to get your buy-in. Okay, great. Good. Now let's do this 100 flips. Right. So let's do this. If we change a single variable. Now I want you to think on this. I really want you to think on this. Hang on. Let me just jump back a slide. We know... Okay, so head, and I, I, I will apologize in advance for my <laughs> horrendous handwriting. I've grown up in the world of, um, yeah, computers. <laughs> well, you'd think I'd be better at using the bloody things, but unfortunately not. Um, heads equals $10 profit plus. Tails is a loss of $10, yeah? We go to that. Now, we know that there is a 50% chance of it landing on tails, which means that we've got a 50% chance of it landing on heads. Okay, we, we all get that dumb, dumb math. Yep, got it under control. We flip that coin 100 times. So, you want to make a profit on this. The win, loss, oops, Sorry, equals zero, right? Because it's 50 50. So that sort of wipes itself out. The reward to risk. Oh, what am I doing? K <laughs> also equals zero. What's the one variable 
Now, let me try that again. You've got a coin. It can be a head or it can be a tail. That is it. There is no other option. None. What is the variable that can make this profitable for us? Please have a think about that and let me know. I want you to think about this. Don't be scared, by the way. When you, by the way, the beauty of this system is that when you write a question or you write an answer, guess who can see it? Only me. And I'm not going to name you. I want to see the collective understanding of where we're at because I want to do this properly for you. And I can give more when I know my audience. Don't all bloody jump at once, eh? Two factors. Win loss. Oops, sorry. Win loss and reward risk. What's the one thing that we can change? There's a hint. There's one thing we can change to make this profitable. What is it? Here they come. Good, good, good. Bingo. Okay, a few people now. Yeah, okay, good. Sorry. I, I probably talked too much. My, my apologies. You probably stopped you from <laughs> having that clarity to think. It's your win loss ratio. Okay. It's your win loss ratio. So let me just get rid of this. Now I don't I don't usually draw it all up like this. This is the beauty of having this little um uh, drawing and you know pen type thing is that I can actually go into a little bit more depth on certain things that aren't necessarily slides because slides are boring as shit, right? Um, <laughs> here's, here's the big one, right? We got 100 flips, 50% gonna land on heads, 50% gonna land on tails. We were saying $10 for a loss, $10 for a win, or $10 for a head, $10 for a tail. What if we switched it out? And we said, gosh darn it, I'm gonna get 20 bucks every time it lands on tails, sorry, on heads, and every time it lands on heads, I'm gonna lose 10. What we've done is we've changed the reward to risk ratio. I guess that's what that looks like to two to one. When we win, which is our reward, we make two. When we risk or lose, we risk one. Now on a 50-50 probability that is set in stone it's a freaking coin you can't change it we now know that we're going to play this game i will flip this coin until the gosh darn cows come home why because it's a winning formula this is the game of probability using coin toss do we all understand this please do type yes or no because if it's a no i will not say your name and i do not mind it is however important for me to be able to communicate to you if you do not understand this it doesn't make you a dummy i, I look trust me i'm the yeah <laughs> you spend enough time with me and I'm a, I'm a pretty simple guy i do know what i know because i focus a lot of time and attention in the tasks that i wish to achieve but there is no such thing as a dumb question here, guys. I promise you that, all right? I am not some big old fun manager who thinks everyone's below them. Not that I'm saying that that's what they do. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a guy who's, who's done you know, School of Hard Knocks. I'm more than happy to go into more detail should you require it. Okay, there is no ego here. Uh, there's an objective and that's to help, okay? It's a God honest truth. Okay, so we get it, good. All right, so. We understand reward risk ratios. We've changed the reward to risk. We cannot change the, uh, the um, uh, oh, goodness me. We cannot change the uh, win-loss ratio. We can change the reward to risk ratio. Excellent. Okay, let's move on from that and, and expand a little bit further. What about if we have a number of, Losses in a row that lose. 
so we already we'll go on from there we know we've got a winning formula yeah now you win you get 20 bucks you lose you lose 10 sorry you lose yeah you lose 10. now we've had eight in a row we're down 80 dollars i want you to know so i want you to tell me do you flip again it's a yes or no question do you flip again and look <coughs> you might be sitting there going hey, i thought this was a trading course it is but i do things differently because you've got to develop a true understanding of what this business is about i cannot i'm not here just to show you a bunch of triangles and all that crap i'm here to teach you how to understand what is going on within this business okay so some smart a smart answer yes if the checklist doesn't have a stop loss amount that's correct this is a straight probability one that's fine with straight probability we'll get to the rest of it the answer that you've all put forth to me is the correct one the answer is yes what if you lose a game do you flip again the answer is yes and why is it a yes the same as that we know when we go to bed at night the sun will rise the next day doesn't mean we'll see the sun no there might be clouds but the sun will rise and guess what if the sun doesn't rise we have nothing to worry about because we're all going to be dead anyway <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, there are certain things that are just that. They are. Now, I call these the absolutes. Okay. Now, you'll hear me use the word or the term absolutes throughout this course and throughout scans and various different pieces. And I'll tell you the reason why I focus my attention on absolutes. And just to make that another language, um, it's being objective. Okay. I don't like anything subjective Sub, su oh, sorry subjectivity comes down to what i think at the time bugger that nah. if i want to be and look i've done that before <laughs> trust me I've, I've lost a lot of money over my years i've made a lot of money too all right and over the last 10 years or so I, i've i've tended to keep it rather than I mean, you know i do have losing months i do have losing trades um i'm not going to tell you how long i've been uh, without losing month because I just there is the power of the universe that I just don't want to <laughs> I don't want to tempt fate <laughs> but I can tell you that, that that by having this um objective mentality when it comes to executing based on financials uh, i.e risking money and you know working to to make money I found it to be very beneficial to me my family and, and the people that I've taught so this is to, to help to project that um, to you guys is that when we work probabilities and again coming back to that in part four which is about mindset part two and three which is about checklists um, there is a reason that everything is structured the way that it is guys it's it's to take that thinking away I don't want you to feel I look you're going to feel fantastic when you have a great win and look I do too I'm not gonna lie I am I am not a robot. I'm a man. I like it when things go well. Um, you know what makes me happy the most when I stalk a trade? When I say stalk, is that you might see it four or five hours out, six hours out, two weeks out. And you go, if it comes back and does this, this, and this, based on the checklist you're going to learn, when it sets up, that trade is so bloody easy to take because you already planned it. You planned what you wanted ahead of it actually occurring. So you already know what you're going to do. If it does provide you with an opportunity, you've never taken a trade so easy. And guess when you take a trade that good, that plan, that structured, you make a loss. Who gives two hoots? Because you manage your risk on it and you've done your job. You cannot dictate to the market what it does. You can dictate what you do within that market. Before I hit on routine, I want to also... Um, uh, there's a lot of little snippets that I'll throw in on this first part, okay? It's to help you understand the way that I see the markets. Um, one of the ways that I see the markets is it's like a language, all right? Now, I've been studying this language for 15 years, so I am fluent. 
I have had my bungles with this language. I have stuffed things up with this language. I've asked for a, you know, for example, to, to give a, an analogy, I've, I've asked for a beer and I've ended up being showed the toilet. <laughs> I've, I've made those mistakes time and time again. Um, the reason I call it a language is that those that just jump into it, like jumping on a plane and going to Spain. Well, no, let, 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 let's go. Let's go a more complex language. Let, let's go to let's go to Russia, because most people have learned probably a little bit of Spanish or been exposed to Spanish or Italian, and they're very kind of similar. You can kind of understand a little bit of stuff, but if you go to Russia, you're talking a whole different ball game, man. So we go to Russia. We've never <laughs> learned a word of Russian. What are we doing? We're flinging arms around. We're pointing. We're, we're gesturing. We're, we're trying to get people to understand what we're saying. And they're going, you are a fruit loop, buddy. <laughs> you get escorted out of the pub because, you know, you look at the bloody karate kid waxing on and waxing off trying to just order a beer. But if you had to study that language, even just the basics of it, you're going to find it so much easier to navigate your time in Russia. Now, the problem is that people will fly to Russia, and this is an analogy, so people will do, do the equivalent of flying to Russia with absolutely no understanding. Because look, apart from the visa, it's not that hard to get to Russia. I mean, pre-COVID, you just buy a flight, get your visa, and you're in Russia. Just the same as all you've got to do is open up an account, do your KYC, and you've got a trading account. The barrier to entry is low. Very low. You go to Russia, you don't know anything about the language. You're confused as all hell. You go back to wherever you're from and you go, gee whiz, these, these Russians, I don't know how to talk English. No shit, Sherlock. You don't know how to speak Russian. That's the same thing as going and opening up a trading account, having a go and going, I lost money. Gee whiz, this trading stuff's rubbish. No, you are. You didn't give it the respect that it deserves. This is a language. We need to learn it. Pay your dues. Learn this puppy. And it will talk to you. It will give you what you need. But you you neglect that and you, you go in with your privilege of I know I know my language and everyone should do what I do. Well if you've already, if you've done it before in life, and I'll be honest, I have. I have as a young man. Um you get humbled pretty quickly. It's not the market that's bad. It's your approach to it. So again, this is why I now come to routine. Um, and I hope this is all making sense. I'm not just someone to waffle. The, these, all, all these stories, all these analogies, all these, um, all these things do come back to trading, all right? Routine, you gotta have one. Full stop. Think about when you get up to go to work, you all right? You wake up in the morning, I mean, maybe you don't have to get up. I mean, maybe it's just roll out of bed, roll into your home office. Now with COVID, it's all a bit wacky. But before that, if you're still going to an office, right, you get up, you, you, you know, you have your shower, you shave, whatever. If you're a man, if you're a woman, you, you do all well, the same minor shaving. <laughs> um, but, you know, you, 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 you got your toothbrush in your mouth. Sometimes you don't even know how it got there. That's a routine. It becomes an anchor. It becomes a behavioral pattern that repeats itself so many times that sometimes you don't even know what's going on. This is true routine. The way you go about your day helps to measure the rest of your day. So to get up in the morning and do a bit of exercise, you speak to or you read books about the top CEOs, the top coaches, the top sports men and women, the top, 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 whatever it may be you'll typically find that many of them do have a routine or nearly all of them. And they'll have a routine of, uh, for, for, for those that are structured towards a full day and, and might not have as erratic um, uh, demands, they will tend to exercise in the morning. Now, I have chronic fatigue syndrome. So for me, uh, my exercise regime has had to diminish significantly due to the fact that if I do too much, my body shuts down and I just have to rest. And it's horrible and it sucks. Um, and, you know, being a high energy person that I am, um, it's, it's been really hard for me to overcome, but I have. Uh, I still have chronic fatigue syndrome, but I've learned how to manage myself better. And it's been the single best and worst thing ever that's ever happened to me. It's made me much more mindful of who I am, what I am, and what I can and can't do. But it's been frustrating as hell. It's all hell. You've got to have something that you are connected to. And a routine is the connection to start your day. I'm a big advocate for that. 
that walk in the morning for me if i can't do the exercise a bit of breath work doing doing certain breath exercises to calm my body to calm my brain and to start my day in a positive sense the way that my day starts it used to be and i still i try as much as i can to still exercise in the morning it's just gone from boxing and paddling and surfing and all that sort of stuff to you know i walk along the beach down here at bondi right then i start my computer i make my tea or my coffee as everything's sort of coming about so i'm going through the motions getting it done i work from a standing desk so i'll go in there and i'll press the button up she goes uh, and i'll stand for the morning i want to be alert i want to be alive i don't want to be lazy i don't want to be sleepy i want to be in on switched on then i get ready i visual i used to visualize my outcome of my trading session and i will say that this number five has changed my visualize my, sorry my visualization um exercises until three years ago when i got my chronic fatigue syndrome i was to visualize a day in which i traded perfectly uh, i saw the right trades you know i, I did everything right uh, since well probably the last two years really not the last four the last two years uh, it's been much more about focusing on being happy because of the you know direct correlation for me personally between happiness and positive outcomes believe it or not who would have thought right so if i can focus on being happy for that day feeling good then i know my outcomes my thought process uh, the way i execute is going to be better and if i don't feel happy that day if i'm fatigued I don't trade okay i'll do my five deep breaths why because it's the last moment of peace before i start my day i can have more moments of peace throughout the day but it's the point in time where i stop collect my thoughts slow down tell myself that i'm ready then I go and scan the market. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. Sometimes I don't do all that. But usually I do. I'm a human being as well. I, I'm not going to tell you that I'm, the, I'm a perfect human being because I'm not. But I can tell you that, you know, in my, in my community that I've got within my business with all the traders that are there, I will tell them when I'm, if I'm having a fatigue day, like a crash day, I'll tell them I'm not going to be around, guys. I, I, I own everything. I own everything. And it helps me to do this routine. And if I get through any of these steps, just like a checklist, guys, if I get to a certain step and I feel bad, sick, uh, depressed, negative, um, whatever you want to call it, then I just, I, I will say I'm, I'm not trading today. Because why would I put the time and effort into something to lose money? And I know that if I'm not good, my results won't be good either. And that's why my visualization is on happiness these days and not about making money or the perfect trade. It's about happiness. Because at the end of the day, what have we got if we don't have that? If that's not your goal, I would strongly suggest you rethink your goals. Happiness is a gift. It is an absolute gift. It's an honor to have, and it's like a relationship. It takes work, all right? It takes work. Take your time. I don't care what it is that you do, what you think. I just want you to have one. Now, this is the part that I didn't have um, about, well, since I got fatigued. So through my fatigue journey, I'm not trying to make this about me. I'm just giving stories to help to relate to some things that you might have been through and to help you understand how I've got to where I am. Um, I went through a period uh, with my fatigue where I had to focus on being more internalizing things. So I, I listened to Eckhart Tolle, or Tolle, or whatever you want to call him. He's got a book called, or an ebook called The Power of Now. And it helped me in my trading as well as in my life. Um, it allowed me to think about the moment that I'm in. Because if you, if you really break everything down, and we're going to do that with trading, right? We're going to break it down that there's only two things you can do. That's it. We'll do that in a minute. But what are you doing now? Because the past is over. The future doesn't exist until we're in it, right? Most people plan for the future without making any, you know, without paying any dues to the now. I've got this, and I, I, su I suggest you, this is your first screenshot, guys, that you print out. And I say that because I got it printed above my face uh, with a picture of a burger. 
<laughs> from my daughter. She did it in preschool, a photo of her face. I got, I got all sorts of weird crap up here on my wall and most of my kids. But, <laughs> but I do have, what are you doing right now? And it, it reminds me always, if you feel flustered, if you're raising an order and you feel like you're doing it quickly and you might be a little bit, <gasps> got to get it up. It reminds me, this is your focus right now, Craig. Drop everything else. If you get home from a crappy day, because not everyone has the privilege that I do to be able to full-time trade. And when I say full-time trade, it doesn't mean that I'm trading all day. It just means that I have the time to look at the markets whenever I want to. And we'll look at windows and how to trade and how to manage your time later. But it reminds me, there is one thing you're doing at one time. Respect that time. Do it properly. Follow procedure. Use your structure. And you get the outcome that you want more times than not. You see, I'm trying to make myself a computer as much as I can, unemotional, so it can't hurt my day. If a losing trade makes you upset, you're just starting out. <laughs> and it will, and a winning trade will make you feel great, and that's okay. You're not going to get to this point without putting the work in first. But understand the most important moment you have in any day is now. Focus on what you're doing. If you're working a full-time job and you come home and you're like, oh, the day was crap. What are you doing right now? Forget everything else because you can start afresh on your side hustle. And that side hustle has the ability to not be just a side hustle. It started as a side hustle for me and it became a full-time income and then a business and then a fund. And now I've got this business as well. You know, don't underestimate what this opportunity that you've got right now can achieve for you. You got to focus on being a student, right? Before you become a master, and look, I'll be honest, I don't like the word master. Um, I'm not a master. I know what I do, but the reason I know what I do is because every single day I bow down to the master that is my market. I don't claim to know anything. I claim to understand how I can operate within this market. It's a big difference. One's ego, one's humble. Ego won't serve you here. There is no place, no place for ego in trading. Now, if you've worked for an investment bank and you've worked on those trading floors, you might go, I beg to differ. But I would still go against that and say, you know, it's, the game's not just about making money, it's about being whole. Trading can give you the lifestyle that you wish to have. It's a wonderful thing, but it can also tear you apart. Okay, so always being a student means that you can accept your mistakes, you can learn from those. That's a lesson a way we go from there. Don't FOMO into things. <laughs> if there's ever a more true statement said that there is always going to be another trade, it crypto is the perfect analogy because it's open 24 7, 365. People say to me, How do you do you ever sleep? I'm like, Yes. How do you do anything else? because trading is a way for me to have the lifestyle I want. Like for, I'll give you an example right now. Uh, like I said, I live in Bondo Beach. I'm about five minutes from the beach uh, where I'm at. A friend of mine who lives on the beach uh, on the south end of Bondi took a photo and sent me a photo of all these fish on the surface eating bait fish. The swell is small. I love fishing. It is my meditation. It is my happy place. As soon as I finish this webinar, Guess where I'm going? <laughs> I'm going straight to Bondi Beach. I'm going fishing tonight. Now, I don't care what the market does. I'm going fishing. Why? Because that's what makes me happy. I'm not fearing missing out. I'm not interested in sitting in front of computer screens my whole life. This allows me to live a lifestyle that I choose to live. So I focus on doing the steps of the process that allows me to have that lifestyle. I'm always looking at this, a confluence of events, and this is really important, guys. I will never take a trade based on one thing, and you're going to learn that. It's always about many different provides, sorry, many different uh, things coming together at the same time. Now, I'm going to provide you with the strategies. Don't expect my results from day dot. You might do better. You might do worse. Just be you, because you can't be me, you can't be anyone else. Everyone else is taken. There's no one else you can be. But, 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 but learn. Learn, ask, reach out, own your mistakes, do assessments of your own trades, 
that's what this is keep your records why because the best teacher is a checklist and yourself if you can maintain a non-biased view and i'll show that to you in part four okay so let's hit some of the basic stuff if you believe the price is going to move higher it is said to be bullish now i want to differentiate when people say oh it's a bull market because i know a lot of people in crypto have never traded other markets and they're not quite so privy on the uh, language of bull and bear i have been crucified well figuratively speaking about saying i'm bullish and people go oh the market fell from there I'm like yeah but during that period i was bullish because there's an uptrend so often people think that when you say you're bullish it means that you think the thing's going to do a 2017 no i'm bullish because i believe the market's going to go higher therefore it's to go long or to buy bullish is to believe the market will go higher bearish it's a believe the market will go lower and just for those that love a pub quiz why is it bullish for up and bearish for down well a bull has horns and they go down and strike their horns upward and try and you know um stick you with their horns or what are they called um you know whatever they stick you with their horns but what does a bear do a bear stands on its hind legs and attacks down there you go there's a point maybe two points on your local pub quiz does it mean anything more than that no here is an example if we're going to be buying at 8089 and don't look at the trading example for an example like for, for a trading purpose if it breaks up through 8089 we're saying okay well we believe it will move higher and hey it does oops sorry we go okay well it's hit 9000 we'll get out at 9000 we've made the difference we have been correct in saying that we believe the market will be higher we believe that it's bullish we believe that we are going to have uh, a move higher we get that it's a profit let's keep things very simple to start guys i just want to uh, want to make sure that we keep every element very very simple we will bring it all together that's how it works who has used leverage or margin just by a show of well there's no hand so are you a show of yes or no all righty some yes, some no. Okay, that's a good mixed bag. Um, let me make a couple of things real simple for you. Leverage, um, again, you know, with your crypto Twitters and your, your all sorts of people that you might follow. Uh, there are some very strong opinions out there from people that have a large following. And unfortunately, in this day and age, because you've got a large following, it seems to be the people think that you will know what you're talking about. And for some, that's true. But for the overwhelming majority, it's not. Um, I've got people that I know in this space that have never traded a day in their life that now have trading courses. And you know why? It's because they've got 60,000 people that follow them on YouTube or whatever it may be, and they don't know how to make a dollar out of it. So they write a course. It's very sad and it makes my profession, um, it, makes it, it makes it tough for me. Uh, I've only, I've devoted my whole life to trading and then I've got some, some person who bought Bitcoin in 2014 thinking that they know how to trade. Um, they know they don't. They're just trying to make a buck out of it. So bottom line is don't believe everything you read on Twitter. Do your research, okay, on the individual. A lot of them say margin is bad. No, 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 no. Anyone that says that margin trading is bad doesn't understand how to trade with margin. Think of how you buy a house, okay? Let's, let, let's make the math simple. Okay, I want to buy a house for a million dollars. All right. Now it's not going to be anywhere around Sydney. <laughs> and let's say the bank is being nice and says, okay, I want a 10% deposit on that house. And that equals a hundred thousand, right? Okay. So I go, okay, oops. I go, yep, no dramas, Mr. Bank Manager, friend, thingy my Bob. There's a hundred grand. I want my one million dollars. And Mr. Bank says, okay, you get it for 2.5% per annum. Now, most people understand this, right? I've now actually borrowed not a million, I've borrowed 900. And I'm keeping the maths very simple, not going through the fees, blah, blah, let's keep it simple. I've borrowed 900 from the bank. And I'm paying 2.5% per annum on that, which is paid well usually weekly or monthly or however you set it up for a hundred thousand dollars i now control an asset worth a million 
Now, if that million dollar asset goes up by 20%, 1.2 million. Now, if I was to take my deposit back, I am left with a profit of 100,000. Oops, sorry. 100,000. That's a K. I've borrowed the bank's money for a low interest rate at the moment to control a larger asset so that when the gains occur, it's on a larger number and my profit is also increased. Now, everyone understands that, I am sure. Well, sorry, I shouldn't assume, but I, I, I'm, I'm fairly certain that most adults uh, are very aware, sorry, very well aware of how a mortgage is structured. Now, that, ladies and gentlemen, is how margin and leverage works in trading. You can use a smaller amount of your crypto asset, i.e. if you've got $100,000 that you've got in Bitcoin, for example, you can leave, say, 95 on your cold storage. So it's safe as houses. And because you're using leverage, you can control an asset far greater because of the type of leverage. Now, typically, you're going to see up to 100 times leverage. Okay? So you've got more than enough to work with. In actual fact, using leverage, when you know how, it is a safer, reduced risk way to trade crypto. But you see, I've been doing this for a very long time. I understand how it works. I understand that it is a double-edged sword, and that's why part of what I teach is about that. Because if you don't understand how this works, you're going to end up with zero dollars very, very fast, but still you're ahead of traditional markets. Why? Because on traditional market platforms, and I can tell you from experience, the euro used to be pegged to the Swiss franc at one euro 20. It was pegged. So that was, they said, we're going to keep it at this price. They pulled the peg. When I was long with a 10 point stop loss, I suffered a thousand points of slippage. I was down, I think it was uh, 650 something thousand Australian dollars at the time. I was at the bowls club with my friends having a beer, watching the rugby. I looked at my phone and went, no, that can't be right. So I went to three different sites on my phone. Yeah, it was right. I went back home and not only had it taken the, I think 700 and something that was in the account in, you know, like as trading collateral, uh, but it also put me into a deficit of 600 and it was about $650,000. Um, now I ended up getting it back and making money on the um, interest rate differential because the liquidity provider stuffed up. I was very lucky. But I tell you what, you know, when you see in the movies how someone's face goes white and they vomit, that was me. I, minus the vomit. I, I, you can lose more than what you have in traditional platforms for the most part. You can't do that. I can't speak for all platforms because I don't know them all. But I have not seen a crypto platform where you can go into negative equity. So whatever's on the platform, you can lose that. If you don't respect margin, you can lose that. But I've not seen one yet where you can lose more than what you've put in. And that is very, very, it's very, very important. And look, David, mate, look, I understand. You don't need to understand the reason why they can go into negative equity. Um, I personally don't either. I just know it can happen. And I know that I've, again, I can't speak for all platforms, but I know that I can so that I've not found one yet in the terms and conditions where I can go into negative equity. And that's a big positive for crypto. It's a real big positive. Bottom line, guys, uh, learn how to understand margin. I can teach you that. It's not hard. It's very straightforward. But if you're learning from seagulls, you'll never learn. Learn from someone who uses it. And guess what? You've got half a bloody chance. You're in the right room. So let's look at margin in an example point of view. Let's say, okay, let's buy it spot. So this is buying Bitcoin spot, which is no margin, straight up. If we buy five Bitcoin, the price is $6,000. So the total outlay, of course, is 30, simple math. The price rise is $500, so $6,500. The profit on that is five Bitcoin times 500, $2,500, you little ripper. The return on my investment of $30,000 is 8.3%. Now, Let's look at leverage using 5% margin. Don't worry about the numbers or the names. Just look at it like this. Okay, we're using an example to illustrate a point. 
We can use 5% margin on our $30,000 account. So we've got a 30K account. We're going to then risk the outlay, of course, with that 5% is 5% of 30,000 is 1,500. We are going to buy Bitcoin at the same price, $6,000. The price rises $500 to 6,500. We're still, oops, sorry. Five Bitcoin times $500, our profit margin remains exactly the same. The amount of money that we made over here at spot is exactly the same with margin. But have a look at this one. Your ROI, <laughs> it's amazing. You know the best thing about this? You've outlaid $1,500 to make that rather than your entire account. What does this mean? You might have five of these. Oops, what was that? The lightning strike. You might have five trades here. You might have some long, some short. You might be hedging. You all these diff. It opens up so much more opportunity. But again, I will never talk about leverage or margin without always caveating that with saying that it is a double edged sword. If it is not understood, respected, and managed, do not touch it. Hippish. Okay, so learning the right words. And look, there is a if, if you ever fall short on something, oh, I need a little help on that. Go to my YouTube page. Trader Cobb is all you need to do on YouTube. All you know, and search that page. There's so much information there, guys. I, I put so much out there for absolutely zero dollars so you can learn. All right. And if you've got the question, come to my business, come to tradercob.com, ask me the question, ask, ask my team the question. Now, they should be able to answer that. If they can't answer that, they'll come to me and I'll answer it for them. I am open to help you, all right? So just anything you don't know, <laughs> just knock on the door. It's always open. So learning the right words is what I was saying about the language of trading. So we're going to kick on to that. There's one thing that really does give me the heebie-jeebies is that there's a lot of courses out there and this is how i started my business it was through frustration probably not the best place to start a business from but it was through frustration because i saw people out there that clearly had absolutely no idea i had as bad as much idea as i do for ballet dancing as they did for trading and they're selling a course for two bitcoin do you know how angry that made me it made me extraordinarily angry because the stuff in those courses was absolute trash again these people weren't traders these are people that were youtube personalities selling something and and i don't agree with that uh, I understand I need to make a buck, but I don't care. Make it some other way. You know, dance for your dinner, sunshine. You know, you, you want to learn how to drive a car, learn from someone who knows how to drive a car. Don't learn from somebody who, you know, who walks on their hands and has and is blind. It's just not going to work, you know. No no offense to anybody who walks on their hand and is blind. Of course, I'm not going to alienate anybody. <laughs> My point is this, technical analysis. Oh, I'll teach you a technical analysis course. That's great. Guess what you learn? Jack. Because technical analysis is like saying, okay, you want to play rugby union. You need a ball, run forward, pass the ball, tackle people. Great. Sounds easy. There's a lot to it. This is where your business lies. Learning technical analysis alone is an absolute waste of your time. And I'd say, Geez, I'd say 70%. I'm not very good at marketing my business. I've got to be honest with you. Um, we are hope, hopefully, I get better at that. Uh, I'm a trader. I'm not an online marketing guru. I, I do not know how to do that. I'm trying to learn to do that better. But I'm a trader. All right? That, that's what I know. I'm, I'm, I'm expanding into other markets by helping others and, and running this business. But I can tell you right now. 70% of the people that do my courses have already done a course and they go, oh, they all they do is teach you a bunch of stuff. They don't teach you how to use it. This is where your money lives. That's a business plan. Technical analysis by itself is nothing. It's how you bring it together that works. I use technical analysis in my trading strategies, but it's like saying, okay, here's a cup of sugar. That will bake you a chocolate cake. Now, there's no amount of looking at that bloody sugar or understanding that sugar and understanding the origins of where it came from, what port it was shipped from, how much diesel was used on the ship from Brazil to Sydney. None of that's going to make a difference. You'll never bake a cake with a cup of chocolate. Sorry, a cup of, <laughs> a cup of sugar, ever. Because there's more that is required. 
to have that success that is required. If you want an outcome, it's not that easy. Gee whiz. This is what gives me the heebie jeebies. Is that people think this is what's important. It's not. It's this. All right. Bringing things together. Let me give you a perfect analogy right here. Okay, so I'm going to talk. I'm going to. I'm going to give you enough words that could create a sentence, and I'm going to give you these words off of what I see on my desk: charger, phone, pen, cup, sunglasses, external hard drive, lip balm, hand sanitizer, gift from child. Now I just said enough words to make a sentence, didn't I? But did that sentence mean anything? Did it make sense? Can you answer that? Can you understand what I'm trying to get at? No, it's the same as me going, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't mean anything. Individual elements by themselves don't mean Jack. It's how they come together in a language that makes a sentence. A sentence allows us to communicate. It allows us to understand and move forward. But most people out there are going, blue, blue, blah, bloody this, that, and the other. Who gives a rat? It doesn't mean, oh, I'm sorry. I get very passionate on this because I see it so often. Uh, it doesn't mean Jack. That word, or those two words, technical analysis, means nothing. Nothing at all. That is why I do not just teach technical analysis. I cut the crap and I will get passionate at times and, and I will sometimes swear and I will say things. I'm sorry, but I am so passionate about this subject that it, you got to understand that that means nothing, guys. It means nothing. You buy a car, great. But can you drive it? Now, I don't know exactly how everything within this car operates. I'm not a mechanic, but I know what I need to do to make that car move forward and backwards when I need it. Up here, you're buying a car and you're sitting in it. Every day you can go and visit your car in the showroom. You just can sit in it. You can listen to the radio. You can listen to the radio and you can, you can play video games in the car if you've got a car that's got that. But you bugger if you can never make it go anywhere. So I would use stronger language, but let's get rid of that one. Let's understand there's more to this than meets the eye. Oh my goodness. Oh, words by themselves mean nothing. We can't converse with singular words. It's a confluence of events. We need to understand what is coming together in a logical way, in a way that we understand, not just a way that we've been told. I'm not here to tell you. I'm here to educate you so you know what to do. I will bring technical analysis tools together, but I'll do it in a way that creates a trading strategy. <sighs> Every business has a strategy, guys. And if they don't, well, they're not really going to be around too long, are they? Now, I don't need to say this to anybody. It's, it's, it's obvious. Uh, businesses that are structured well, that have plans, that, that understand what they're doing, they're going to have a higher probability of success than those that just go out and piss in the wind. Okay? So what do I focus on? I'll tell you what I don't focus on. I don't focus on the technical analysis rubbish that's out there. And again, please don't take this as an insult on anybody who uses this. Overbought RSI. Who cares? Moving average crossovers mean nothing. A dead cross means nothing. Double bottom means nothing. The word should not exist. Head and shoulders should not exist. Sloping trend lines are the worst culprit of all to distract individuals from what is truthful, from what is real, from what is objective. They're absolutely useless. All of the above completely and utterly a waste of your time now i will teach you about moving averages i will teach you about you know what this means head and shoulders and double bottom and double top and triple bottoms and all that but i'm going to simplify it in a way that you understand because at the end of the day if you've got kids 
you should pretty well bloody know what your kids' names are, right? But what about that mate that you don't see all that often? You see him every, I don't know, six weeks. Is it absolutely paramount that you remember that bloke's kids' names? <laughs> no, it's not. So wipe it out of your brain and focus on what's important. We're going to look at factual information. No longer will we ever consider anything subjective. And by the way, if you think I sound angry, I'm not angry. I am very expressive. I am very passionate. I am very Australian. <laughs> All right, so we're not going to look at subjective rubbish. We're going to learn from others that have already been there. I have learned from them. I am now passing it on to you and Gate has asked me to do so. So that is what I'm doing with the absolute utmost of passion, excitement and enthusiasm as I bloody well possibly can. We're going to learn from other people's mistakes. And at the end of the day, I'll tell you right now, the hardest thing for me to get rid of when I was learning to trade, even when I had a mentor was this. So if you're finding it hard to consider that, I absolutely understand. It got to a point where everything in my trading was objective bar sloping trend lines. And I thought, oh, I know, I know how to use these things. Hmm. My mentor said to me, and this is a bloody good mentor, by the way. Uh, he goes, listen, if I see another sloping trend line in the charts, I won't mentor you anymore. Woo, okay. <laughs> that changed me real quick. We're going to use this word objectively. We're going to use checklists and rules. We're going to use actual factual information of the market. And it's not just going to change my life because it already has. I'm in a position of privilege right now to be in this position to be able to talk to you about this. And I respect that. And I, I, I do not take that lightly. I'm going to give you everything, everything I possibly can. All right. Please just follow me on this. I want you to take a screenshot of this chart. Uh, sorry, this page. Who's okay. So, all right. Let me give you a glass of water. I got a bit psyched up before. Hang on. Oh, all right. So I got a bit pumped. I always do. <laughs> I always say sorry at this point too, because it, it, no matter how many times I do this, I do really like, I, I feel it. I love it. Um, I want you to have what I've had, uh, without, without as many issues as I've had, uh, to be honest, but it's been hard for me to get to where I'm at. Um, I'd like to make it a bit, the, the, I'd like to give the path to those that are willing to put the work in a little bit easier because I didn't have it that way. Um, it's just the way the world works, I hope. Anyway, let me simplify everything you do in the markets. You've seen it before where it's been complex, where there's a lot of indicators and people's charts are covered in dots and spots and lines and indicators. And you go, what the blooming heck are they looking at? Well, I want to do the opposite. I want to pull everything back right now. And I'm going to work to absolutes. Remember, I said before I talk about absolutes. Well, here's an absolute. What can you do? when it comes to trading. Well, you've got two choices, ladies and gentlemen, you can buy or you can sell. Now they're actions because buying requires you to do something. Selling requires you to do something as well. The passive is to not do anything. And if you're a good trader, you'll be passive most of the time. But at the end of the day, you can only buy and you can only sell and there's no amount of lines or dots or spots or this or that that will ever take away from what the facts are. You're a buyer or you're a seller or you do nothing. So why do we need to overcomplicate the process of getting to that objective decision? Well, we don't. We don't need to. Often we choose to. And as I said earlier, I think it's down to the scholastic way of we doing things. It, the harder the, the harder the equation, if we get it right, the better it is, grades wise. So everything is always going to come back to the objective decision of are we buying, are we selling? And if it ain't clear what we're going to do, then what do we do? Nothing. Nothing is the most important position you'll ever have. If you want to make a living, that is. So I have made that point relatively clear. 
who's in control, buyers or sellers. At the end of the day, nothing else matters. On a candle, who won, buyers or sellers? Trend, what does that help us with? Well, who's in control, buyers or sellers? Everything comes back to that because there's nothing else that matters. You can buy, you can sell, that's it. So if we start from that early core of simplicity and work out from that, as opposed to going from into a complex world where we never actually come down to the core, how often do you hear people say, the markets are that simple? I said simple, doesn't mean it's easy. Okay, it's it can be simple, but it's not easy. Think of your favorite piece of music. Well, for me personally, it's like an acoustic guitar with a great lyricist with a great voice or a piano with, a, you know, it's something simple. It's perfection, it's simplicity. And that's what I'm trying to do in my career. I don't care about anything else but who won that candle. Trend tells me who's winning that, that, that period of time. I'm focusing on outcome base. What are the outcomes? Buy or sell. Who is in control? Everything. Who is in control? Why? Why? Because I need an exact entry, an exact stop, and an exact target or targets. Why? Because if, in my eyes, if you don't have a stop loss, it's not a trade. That's my way of doing things, yeah? If you don't have a stop loss, it ain't a trade. It's a suck it and see. Hope for the best. And I'll be brutal at times. And I, I make no apologies for it, to be honest with you, because my objective is not to be, you know, my objective is obviously always to be nice and do the right thing. My objective is to help you, not to fluff this shit out with making, you know, oh, everything's fantastic. You know, every, everything's fairies and bloody lollipops and rainbows. No, the truth be told, it's going to take some work, guys, but you can do it. I did it. <laughs> you can do it. So let's look into the plan now. Uh, by the way, are we, are we all okay right now? Like, I know I'm... I'm 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 giving I'm giving a lot of energy. Um, is everyone understanding what I'm saying? I, I want to make sure that you're because all this is 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 wasted if if you are not sort of seeing um, what I'm getting at and where I'm coming from. If you're not, I, I do need to know that because my objective is to help you. Uh, it's got nothing to do with me. This is all about you. So I just want to make like I give a lot of energy, a lot of passion, a lot of enthusiasm because it's it's extraordinarily important for me. Uh, that you get things, you understand it, and we can move on to the next stage. Okay, thank you. All right, good. Let's keep going. Any questions, please do let me know. So what type of trader are you, swing or day trader? Let's start to pull out that notepad uh, and let's get stuck into this. You might not know what sort of trader you are, and that is okay, absolutely 100% fine. There are two options. Yeah, will you trade full or part-time? Most of you should trade part-time, even if you've got full-time hours. Trading full-time hours does not necessarily mean you get better results. Fact. Let's look at the difference between the two and you can start to work out what you want to do. Swing trading, you might be in a trade for days, weeks, or whatever it may be. You know what I mean? Like you might be in it for a while. <laughs> You're trying to catch, capture a chunk of what I call the mids, which comes from medium term trend move. And you're going to see this when I do my scans on Thursday night, by the way, or whatever time I started this in your time frame on Thursday, um, you, you can see it and you log in and all that, you, you get the emails now, but I'll be doing a scan of gate product. So I'll, I'll, again, I'm going to build on top of the education here by presenting and showing you within the market itself. All right. So yeah, we're gonna look at swing trading as a bit more time, medium time moves, maybe a couple of days, maybe 16 hours, 20 hours a week, all right? Now there's no shame in either or, usually executed on the four, eight, daily, weekly. That's swing trading. Your intraday stuff is on your lower time frames, five, 15, look honestly, to be absolutely dead set straight with you, I can only teach based on what I do. Um, very rarely will I trade the five to the point where on, on these sorts of events like this, where I don't know you from Adam, I'd say leave the five, okay? I'd say 15 and higher. It can be a little too fast, overwhelming. The last thing I want is you to start trading on the low time frame, blow your account or have a bad experience and just shut the book and walk away. Because this is an opportunity that you may never get again. 
I want it to be as, as good as I can possibly make it. Leave the five, start at 15, but also don't overdo it. It's lower time frames, which is day trading. What are the benefits? What are um, what, what are you focused towards more? Well, let's do that. Well, it's the same, the same markets to a certain extent. If you want to trade the lower time frames, then if you're trading, say, a 15 minute chart, you wouldn't you, you want to look at the more liquid markets. We're talking top 10 if you've got a bit of capital. If you if, if you're trading on smaller accounts, you know, like say under 10,000, for example then you can expand it out into other markets because the liquidity will survive. Teach you more about that when I do the scans, that there's only so much I can teach within this first start chapter. The same strategies apply, absolutely no doubt at all. Same risk principles apply, if anything, if you're day trading, you might uh, reduce the amount of risk you take per trade as it can be a baptism of fire. The difference is obviously the time frames and your account size. If you're trading off a very, very small account and you want to risk manage your trades, then you might not be taking a, say, Bitcoin uh, weekly chart setup because you cannot get the position size that you need with margin. Because on a lower time frame, you might need a $10 stop loss. On a higher time frame, it might be $200, $500, even $600. Now, this is a little bit more, I don't want to go into too much more detail here because this is like an advanced bit where it, it's just, it's opening you up to understanding more about this bit than this bit, okay? You're going to need to learn as you go and that's okay. I do not have all the answers and here's a little secret. I never have all the answers. <laughs> We live, we learn, we structure, we trade. We get some right, we get some wrong. We get more right than wrong. That doesn't have anything to do with profit. Your objective is to trade well. With a checklist, much easier to do that. So first of all, what do you think you are? And I've got no issue whether you think you swing, whether you think you're intraday, whether you think you both, I don't care. I don't want to influence that decision. I want to give you factual information for you to make your own decision. This at the end of the day is your business. I don't make a dollar out of you making a dollar. <laughs> it makes no difference to me. All I want is for you to make a decision because if you can't be decisive, then good luck being a trader. So work it out. When you start, you probably want to be a day trader. Why? Because sex sells, right? How many Italian restaurants do you need to go to? <laughs> yeah, you, know, you can start trading right away. But I can tell you now, if you start with day trading, please minimize your risk because it's likely to be a baptism of fire. You'll have more opportunities that will set up. Sure, you might kill the pig. That's an Australian saying. It's a it's got nothing to do with actually murdering pigs. <laughs> it's just when you do well. I don't know why. I don't know why. I've never killed a pig. But that's just a saying that we've got. You might kill the pig, you might be butchered yourself. The objective that I want for you is to make a call that suits you. You can change. You can alter your plan. What personality have you got? What are you drawn towards? How much time will you dedicate to your trading? All of these are on you, not me. But I can tell you why you might swing trade. You're using the higher time frames, therefore, and you will have this checklist. So it, just think back to um, a lot more of the part one will make more like it will it'll have a different meaning as we get through part three and four. That's why I record all of these and you will be able to come back and watch those recordings for a duration. OK, um, I want you to redo these as many times as you need to. So it all sinks in and, you know, you read a book once, you read a book again. Uh, either you're wasting your time because it's a novel and it's, it's science fiction <laughs> or it's something you want to learn from the second time through, you're much better off at picking up things. Um, but, you know, the, the, if you're working from the higher time frames and you're working from a checklist, you often have more time, more time to make decisions. Uh, I like that. Uh, I like it not because of the decision making process, but because guess who's a busy mother? Well, sorry. Oh, geez, nearly that slip. Guess who is a busy man? <laughs> Me. 
um yeah i've i don't think i'd have been more busy in my life i went from spear fishing and surfing every day trading full time to running a business and you know it's it's full on but it's a lot of fun it's a new challenge for me i know how to trade markets i'm i'm, I'm learning how to run a business and it's good fun so i i trade the higher time frames frequently because it suits my lifestyle can i make a lot of money in lower time frames shit yeah i've done that before i love it i'm good at it but it's got to be around you, who you are, what you want. Making decisions over time is better for some. It's not as intense because you don't have to make a decision in the next 30 seconds. You can take your time. Yeah. Because of that, you'll usually have fewer trades open. Therefore, not having to manage as much going on. You'll get less slippage, which we'll talk about as we get to that stage. So you will get filled with prices that you wish more often than not. And bottom line is this. It means that you're less susceptible to those big intraday spikes. You know when you see those candles on the 15 minute and they go whoop? Well, if you're not looking at the 15 minute and you look at the four hour, you won't even notice those little spikes because they're sucked up. So the swing trading, I think it's a really good way to start. That's how I started my career with swing trading UK FTSE 350 equities. That's how I started. Okay. So why would you day trade? Well, it's good for some personalities all right um you might you might you know only want to trade the high liquidity markets like bitcoin ethereum xrp litecoin these sorts of things and that's fine you know in and out quickly you're in and out you, you're the sort of person who doesn't want to spend a lot of time but you're really good at focused short periods of bursts of intense concentration and that that's that's good if, if you're like that hey this works for you just fine swing trading might frustrate the heck out of you it's better for smaller accounts because you can uh, get your trading size that you wish to. And because of the great volume of your trades, you've got, a, you've got a heck of a learning curve. You'll take more trades on the lower time frames naturally because more will set up. You're either in profit or loss relatively quickly. And for those, and look, I can tell you, uh, abs oops, sorry, I can tell you with absolute honesty that when I started trading, I struggled to sleep. Well, no, so when, I, when I started trading foreign exchange, because foreign exchange is uh, 24, five and a half, uh, not like our market, which is 24, seven, um, you go to sleep and you still got to trade open. Now I struggled with that uh, mentally. It was, it was hard for me. Um, so if you're like that, if you, if you start uh, in, uh, sorry, swing trading, like, oh, the sleep factor, if you can't combat that, then try intraday. Because there's nothing more important than a good night's sleep for good health and mental health. So that's another reason why it is a positive and probably one of the most important, to be fair. <clears throat> okay. So here's the next stage where we start to look into some of the markets. Uh, sorry, some of the things that go on within markets. We're going to start now, uh, sorry, on mastering price action. That's why the slide says it. Mm -hmm. reading what matters on the chart so from this point on ladies and gentlemen we are going to be looking at some of these technical ingredients now if you're sitting there going oh my goodness mate this guy's so bloody boring i'm over this well guess what yeah we are over the me talking i mean i still got to talk because sign language won't work all right <laughs> but it's about you learning at this point reading what matters on the charts fail here and this shit's all sorry it's all she wrote right the most valuable thing i can ever teach you is price action ladies and gentlemen i will say that to you now i will say that to you to the day i die or retire why i'll tell you what price action tells you it tells you price measured by time Ooh, simplicity kills right it kills it makes it makes you better price is pure it's not subjective. And let's think, let, 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 let's make this logical. I, I did promise you that I would teach you the logic behind the way that I teach price. Okay. If I, um, what, what's the old saying? Uh, the, 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 the cart before the horse. You understand that the cart does not go before the horse. That's how that saying is used. Without the horse in front of the cart, the cart doesn't move. The cart is used. There's a, like a horse behind the cart. Nothing happens. You get that. All right, you get that simple stuff. Well, guess what? Every indicator, be it your MACD, your RSI, your stochastic, your CCI, anything. Price comes first. 
nothing else matters. Price leads everything. No worries, David, mate. No dramas at all, brother. You uh, you do what you got to do, mate. Enjoy. So price leads everything. You do not get indicators without price first. So who should be your leader? Well, that's obvious. It's price. It's pure. It's a representation of price measured by time. So let's look at this candle, for example. It's telling me the high that price was, the low that price was, the open that price was, the close that price was. It's factual information. It's an absolute. We can live, live, sorry, we can live and trust it. We can build on that. Everything else is secondary. If you were to say, Craig, I will give you uh, every indicator that you want, but no price action for you to trade, or I will give you price action by itself and zero indicators, I will take price action by itself because it's real. It's pure. It does not lag. Everything lags. Price. Point made, I hope so. So when you understand that reading a chart before any indicators and indicators are a secondary measure, it's going to make life a lot easier. The things that we're going to be learning throughout this mastering price action is chart structure, candles, trading the trend, support and resistance, moving averages and multiple time frames. No need to take a screenshot of this, chart, of this uh, picture as I will cover it as we go through. Trend. Now, for those of you who are sitting here going, oh, I see a trend. I see a trend. No. Forget your sloping trend lines. I'm going to teach you what trend actually is. An uptrend, it's higher highs and higher lows. And truth be told, when I started trading, when I was in London at 21 years old, here's what I had. I had a laptop compact, still have it. Because unfortunately, I deleted every single one of my three years of travel photos on it and I've still got this pathetic part of my brain that thinks I can recover it. <laughs> oh, it still makes me shed a tear. On the right hand, sorry, on the left hand side of my laptop I had this. High, high or low, high or high, high or low, high or high. Up trend. On a post-it note, stuck to the side of my computer, off the side of the screen. On the right hand side, I had this. Oh shit, sorry. Ooh, bugger. Actually, is bugger a swear word in other parts of the world? I don't know. I know that we swear a lot in Australia. <laughs> low, low, high. Lower, low, lower, high. Well, what's that? It's a down trend. I had two post-it notes and of course, you know, I had sticky tape on the post-it notes because you know what, I'll tell you what they did do, the inventor of post-it notes, they they really, really, really scrimped hard, didn't they, on the glue. Because let's be honest, a post-it note doesn't last more than four days. You need to put some bloody blue tack on that thing or some sticky tape. Either way, I had it stuck to either my screens, sorry, either side of my screens. And what I would do is this, I'd connect the highs and the lows. And that is why I had it simplified like this, because an uptrend is directed or dictated, sorry, by higher highs and higher lows. And a downtrend is dictated by lower highs and lower lows. And there ain't nothing more to it. And I don't care what happened over here. Sorry. What matters is the right hand side of our screen. Now, if you're sitting there a bit cross eyed right now, you won't be the only one. And it's okay. I will like two ropes that are wrapped up together. Eventually, you'll take one and walk left, and I'll take one and walk right, and all that messed up middle stuff that's all intertwined is going to spread out and it's going to become very obvious and very clear the path that you're on. So if you do get a little bit confused, don't worry because repetition's the key. And guess what you're going to do? You're going to repeat the crap out of this stuff. Next. Example of trends. I'm going to connect the high highs and high lows like this. Right? That's an uptrend. And I'm using the extremities. And let me explain that. The extremities. I don't care where the candle opens. I don't care where the candle closes. Let me use this one on the left. That's the low. That's the high. That's the low. That's the high. Ziggity zigzag. If you and again, you know, you might be going, hang on a second, this reminds me of Mr. Squiggle. 
I'm not sure if that was a global thing, but in Australia, we had Mr. Squiggle. All right, and he would tell us how to draw. And he'd go upside down, upside down. Well, an uptrend is an upside down. Sorry, a downtrend is an upside down uptrend. But the thing is, is the beauty of drawing, the beauty of understanding comes from simplicity. There are three types of trends. There is an uptrend, which is higher highs, higher low, higher high, higher low downtrends which are lower highs and lower lows there's also a third type of trend don't forget we can buy we can sell and we can do what we can do nothing there are trends that are no trends now i want you to get your pen and paper out please right now i'm gonna have a sip of water while you do that because I, I do seriously man i would like you to get to that please this is a very important part uh, of this entire experience that we're going through well, I just call what we're doing an experience. I want you to write this. If it's not clear, as in clear, C L E A R, if it's not clear, it's not there. If it's not clear, it's not there. If it's not clear, it's not there. And here's what I mean by that. You are you, I am me. I have 15 years of trading experience. This might be the first thing you've ever done with trading. What's clear or what may be clear to me may not be clear to you. And that's fine because experience will help you to get different pockets of clarity to encapsulate everything that you see in the markets or at least most of it like where i'm at right now if you look at a chart and you go oh i'm not too sure about that please don't push it if it doesn't abundantly stand out where you go oh absolutely that's an uptrend or downtrend move on do you know how many charts are out there do you know how much opportunity we have do not sweat the small stuff if it's not clear, it's not there. And that should be printed out and stuck up on your wall right next to the other one that says, um, oh, what the bloody, oh, I'm looking at, uh, what am I doing now? I look down, I should look up. What are you doing now? Yeah, that's, that's important. If it's not clear, it's not there. The individual is you, not me, you. If you can't see it clear, you can't make a decision with confidence. And if you can't make a decision with confidence and conviction, then you shouldn't make a decision at all. You should do this. Skip. Off we go. Now, I'm going to give you, I don't know, how long do you need? I'm going to give you about a minute. I want you to tell me what A, B, and C are, up, down, or no trend. If it's not clear, it's not there, and that's fine. I'm going to mute myself. Over to you. All right. So yeah, okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look, let's have a look. And don't forget, it's okay. Like, I, I'm more than happy for you to question things. I got no problem. Let's remember what the post-it note said, right? Oops, darn it. Hang up. We're connecting the highs and the lows. Now it might seem, you know, 
as something completely new, then it might be a little bit tricky. But don't ever forget the simplicity of what this is. There's a low, all right? There's another low, there's another low, there's another low. We've now nominated the lows. Where are the lower highs? Well, it looks like that. It looks like that, possibly even there, and maybe here. So what are we doing now? I should have marked that one too, sorry. See, it's 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 a matter of playing that game where you had your little drawing books when you were a kid. And I say that not to be uh, insulting as if, oh, no, duh, look how easy it is. I say it because I want you to come back to the simplicity of, of, of the way that we learnt. Connect the dots was not exactly a, you know, a difficult thing to do, depending on what book you bought, of course, and depending if you were me. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, we're not, I'm not trying to complicate this. I'm trying to simplify that. The complex part is that people don't understand to simplify these days. Look, connect those dots. So when we do it like this, this is up. Yeah, higher lows and higher highs. This has got lower highs and lower lows. Now, if this one was a little more tricky and it wasn't clear, hey, not a problem, mate. Not a problem. Because I hope this one, higher highs and higher lows, I hope this one was clear because that is fairly clear. If you got one out of those three that you saw was clear, that's the chart you stalk for trades. Again, it doesn't need to be difficult. I'll give you a few on this one. This one is a little bit more tricky. I'll mute myself and give you 20 seconds. Again, if this one was a little, if you look at the whole picture, oops, sorry, there you go. Look at the whole picture, you go, oh, it looks like it's going up, but I'm not asking you to look at the whole picture. I'm asking you to look at the definition of the picture. Oh, sorry, I stuffed that up. What I'm after is this there's a low, higher low, higher high. It's at this point that we move into an uptrend. It's an uptrend. It might not be as clear, but it's there. You will get there over time. If you didn't get that one right, that's fine. What about this one? Up, up, sorry, uptrend, downtrend, or no trend? Okay, let's make it simple. Let's go. Come on, pen work. That's a higher high. That's a lower low. That doesn't fit into what we're talking about before, does it? So there is no trend. So we skipped. We're going to have a lot more practice at this, by the way. So fear not. There is a, a lot more uh, to be done. <clears throat> Um, I do use support and resistance and I call it real support or resistance. All right. Now, this is what it looks like. And I'm going to make this very, very clear. And I want you to take notes if you need to. And I want you to take a screenshot here if you need to. So I'll get rid of my ugly drawings. Resistance is when you have two touches. How many? Two above you 
upper. So the way I visualize this was that it, resistance is above me. It is the ceiling above my head right now in my office. If I had a little mini trampoline in here and I jump, I'm going to smack my head on that ceiling and it's going to send me back down. <laughs> so two tests, bang, up. It's above me, above, above, above. Support is two tests below. Support is the floor that holds my weight up for me to twinkle toe across it. Yeah, it's the floor beneath my footsies two touches here's what it looks like test one test two by bees dick i'll talk to you about that and here's three minimum two minimum how many two here's support uns dos tres three is you gotta have two two is minimum the number is two resistance above support is below you see what i'm trying to teach here is i don't there's, there's no tricky stuff all right it is what like if, it, it's like reading a legal document i hate them but i've got a mate of mine who's a lawyer and i go through i go to him and he keeps on saying to me if you just learn to read it for what it is and stop skimming through it you don't understand i'm like god stop it <laughs> just help me <laughs> and what i mean is that Resi like if you read that okay resistance what think about it logically what is resistance what resistance is stopping you from getting through something okay what's the opposite of resistance likely support what support do well if you think about it logically resistance is above because support is below so everything comes back to that but uh, you can always reverse it if you're ever confused all the way back to one thing buying or selling are you a buyer or a seller is the market um being run or controlled by buyers or is it being controlled by sellers always bring it back to the honest truth there's two things you can do if there's any confusion in that chain of events or that chain of a command in your brain walk away you don't have to trade you can wait now i will say this to you ladies and gentlemen this is this is it's never going to be this hard ever again and what i mean by that is that i'm never going to ask you to look for support or resistance oops sorry back here Ooh. and when you look at a chart and you're on gate on exchange you're going to have a crosshair so you're going to be able to see visually a lot easier these levels of support and resistance support there resistance there not the greatest level that one i've got to be honest uh, oops sorry uh you can look at support so resistance through there i can't really it's very difficult to draw with a pen like this uh, a bit of support running through so oh gee whiz that was a shocker uh oh, come on through here yeah it's it's about those well, how many tests how many two if it's above its resistance, if it's below its support. Now, what I'd like you to do is to just go through this. If you've got a ruler, have a crack. If not, use those papers on the front of your face. They're called eyes. Sometimes they help. Not always, because sometimes it's just bloody hard without a crosshair. But it will never be this hard again. You see, my objective is to make it difficult for you in the course. I do the reverse script on trading courses. Usually they want you to make it, so they want to make it really simple for you. So you feel great at the end of it and you go, hey, this is fantastic. But when it comes to actually implementing that in the market, you've got Buckley's chance. I do it the other way around. I make it very, very hard during the course, <laughs> encourage questions. And then when you actually go to the market, it does become uh, a lot easier. all right bit of resistance running through there bit of support running through there bit of resistance through there there's also a number of other places that you could look to see that as well again i just really 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 want to make sure that i make it very clear guys that it's not going to be this hard in the future and the beauty of what gate has produced or sorry asked me to produce for you is that you'll get to see me do it in real time 
and I'm going to show you how to do this. It doesn't negate the importance of this section of the course, but it's certainly going to um, open up a whole other level of understanding when I can do it uh, in person. Okay. Something else is that old resistance can act as new support and vice versa. As price moves up and comes back in and retests, it doesn't mean it's going to bounce. Why does it keep doing that? It doesn't mean it's going to bounce. But what it does mean is it gives you somewhat of a, I suppose, in an uptrend, some like that trampoline in my office, right? You know, if I hit the tramp, if I go up, bounce back down, bing, there's a probability I'm going to bounce up. Now, of course, it's not the only probability. We're going to add lots of probabilities to that to make it work. But it gives us a, an, another another ingredient, you know, another another little tick that we can increase our probability of that successful outcome that we want. And that's the end of the day. It's a bonus factor for us. And that's how I use it. OK. It's, it's important to understand that. You're not always going to have everything you want in perfect order. It's these little tiny ingredients here and there that build us towards a level of understanding of what we're looking at. And if we do understand it, i.e. it is clear, then it may be there if it fits our rules. OK, so the same thing. Sorry, the same thing goes that if support, if it was do this, and it comes back because don't forget we can go long and short short is making money as the market falls long is making money as the market increases we see that when you go oh we got a little cradle trade there bushka it's a bonus factor now i'd like you to have a look at this and see can you tell me where resistance has come in and been support see if you got it now, what I'm talking about here is test one, test two, test three. That's our resistance. Remember, the three above. So two tests above at a minimum. We've got three above. Then it breaks above, comes back. That could have been your opportunity. You don't always need to take the break. You can also look for that bounce. It's a bonus factor. Give it another little crack a doodle here. And look, in all honesty, look, I don't need to know the number. I know it's very difficult. I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not an idiot. Um, sorry, I shouldn't say it like that. Uh, I, I'm very much aware <clears throat> of how difficult it is for you to give me a number. I, I don't really need the number. All I need you to do is to do it visually for yourself and to mark that on the chart. If my line marks up with yours, you know you got it right. And if you didn't get it right, hey, don't sweat it because, again, like I said, Gate has provided you with plenty of opportunities for me to show you in real time how this actually works. There it is. Not as pretty as the last one. And to be fair, that line should actually be a little bit higher. Why isn't it, I hear you ask? <laughs> um, if you've ever used PowerPoint, it's it's one of those things where you might want to draw the line there, but it's like it needs to be there. Like It, it, it just skips. <laughs> it just jumps ahead a little bit, and you can't do much about that. It's just the software. So, it, yes, it should be taking in really through here, through here, through here, and, and it's much, much, much better off. The object, sorry, the objective here is it pushes above, pulls back in, and then it moves. Now, do not be under any false pretenses. Just because it pulls back to this doesn't mean you're going to get that move. There's a confluence of events that need to occur around that point for us to actually get involved. And yeah, the part one's not going to get you trading. It's the other two parts that are going to get you there. Now, listen sloping trend lines oh my goodness please 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 don't use them there you go let me give you an example i can remember Oh, it was before we pushed up through. Big, 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 big. Oh, I can't talk. Bitcoin went through <clears throat> a period of um, consolidation on the daily and the weekly. And those that don't trade, or that do trade and don't trade with success, or that do trade but haven't traded for long, often do this. And it, let me again. I want to give you the underlying message here. They go, oh look, Bitcoin's moving into a into a into a range. Yep. 
if it breaks out through here, it's got to move higher. Why? Why? Let me make this very clear. It doesn't need to move up or down through that point at all. Why would it? Let me give you some logic. Because, because, because Mr. or Mrs. Such and such drew a couple of lines on a chart. Bitcoin should accept that as gospel. Why? Because, because someone said it. The market doesn't give two shits about you or me or anyone. The market is like the universe. It doesn't need you or me. It does what it wants. We either get in tune with that market and work towards success and learning, or we pretend that we know and we lose. They're your choices. And guess what happens, right? So according to them, it breaks out through here. Oh, there we go. And look, there's that move. Oh, and then poof, back down. Oh, shit, that didn't work out too well. So what do they do? They take away that blue line and they go, okay, we'll connect that through there. And we'll connect that through there. Oh, it's building. <laughs> you see how ridiculous it is? Keep moving your sloping trend lines and you can keep believing whatever you want. Believing. My children, I gotta say this quietly, just in case they hear me there. My, my, my children believe in Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, the Easter Bunny, and whatever else shit I make up, right? And I'm sorry if I've just spoiled that for you. I really am, and I'm very sorry. I should have said children leave this first. <laughs> but we know it's not true. Now, I believed in the Easter Bunny, and I believed in Santa Claus, and I believed in a lot of stuff. Until I started learning and maturing my thought processes, then I realized this is absolute rubbish. Why? Well, because, like I said, I just the market moves, and I move my line with it. That's not objective. How am I going to make a decision when everything changes every three days? The reason I use horizontal levels, ladies and gentlemen, is because horizontal is 180 degrees. It is one degree, and that degree is 180. There are 360 degrees in a circle. Well, there are 359 degrees that I do not give a, to, give a hoot about. There is one degree I do, because it's horizontal. It cannot be changed. It cannot be tilted. It cannot be twisted to fit what I want to see. My objectives don't matter unless they're objective take away subjectivity ladies and gentlemen and i promise you if it doesn't make your trading better it will make what you see clearer clarity allows for decisiveness and decisiveness allows for clarity and both of those things combine allow to be consistent in your approach and what did i say at the beginning <laughs> a consistent approach consistent returns I rest my case and I hope I've not offended anybody. I did warn you at the beginning of this that I will say some things that you don't like. Chart patterns, okie dokie, double top, double bottom. Want to waste some time? Let's do it. What's an uptrend? Actually, let me just go back here. Sorry, what, 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 what's a downtrend? Lower highs and lower lows. I'm sorry I've got a little bit of a time here. I put a lot of love into this. Um, my apologies. A downtrend is lower highs and lower lows. So what's an uptrend? Higher lows and higher highs. Why do I need to give this a name? Because I want to sell a book? I want to sell a course? Maybe. My belief is that when we're learning a new skill, there is only a certain amount of brain power that we have. And if we waste that brain power on things that we don't need to know, it takes us a heck of a lot longer exponentially at the beginning to learn what is and what is not. Now, I've met people that say, Craig, I don't need your stuff because I've been trading for 10 years. Well, that's great. I've met people that have been trading for 20 years that I've helped. Not, not successfully, breaking even. They just don't have that clarity. I'm fortunate, don't get me wrong. I'm not here to blow up my balloon or say I'm amazing. I'm not, I'm not. I've been lucky, man. Like, I mean, I look, I've worked hard. Don't get me wrong, I've worked very hard. But I have been lucky by the people that I've been able to be around to learn from. I have. And I've done it all for free. I, 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 you know, I worked hard, hard and persistent to the point of being annoying, like a mosquito in your ear. You, you have to do something about it <laughs> to make it go away. 
Um, but I got where I got because I, I didn't cloud my head with that crap after the first few years. You know what? Let me show you a couple of things, right? Higher low, higher high. What's that mean? That means an uptrend, right? We just learned that. So we know what an uptrend is. So why do we need to name it? Do you name your elbow? Or is your elbow just an elbow? No, it's an elbow. It's not David elbow and the other one's Harry elbow. It's just an elbow. It just is what it is. Why name it? You know, you go to a double, uh, I'm sorry, a double uh, top. Same thing. Higher highs and higher lows and lower highs and lower lows. It's a trend reversal. Do I name the other knee Sally and the other one Deborah? No, they're a knee. They don't need names. They just are what they are. They are there for a reason. If I named every moving part of my body, I wouldn't know what my name was. It's a complete and utter waste of brain power. Listen, trading's not going to be easy. I promise you that, okay? I'm not here to pretend that it is. I'll tell you what it should be, though. It should be simple. Clouding your vision with all these stupid names. I mean, look, okay, let's do this. So far, the tally is we've got two things that we don't need to know because a double top, double bottom. Let's go to the next one. Head and shoulders, it's the same thing. We reverse from a downtrend with lower lows and lower highs to a higher low and higher high. Now there's a head and shoulders top and there's a head and shoulders bottom. So now we're up to four. Four different things we don't need to think of. But hang on, let's add to that. We have a left shoulder. That's five, we don't need to know. We have a head. Okay, let's make that six things we don't need to know. Oh, sorry. And then we've got a right shoulder. That is now seven things that we do not need to learn because guess what? We learned what it all means. And it's trend. So forget all these silly little, like these are the non-events. that None of that matters. None of it matters. The names of things, you know, like, my name's Craig. I'm sure you know a prick that's named Craig. Doesn't make me a prick. Doesn't make every Craig a prick. It just represents something. That's all it does. Forget about all that rubbish and focus on what matters. What's the market telling us? You don't need all that clutter in your head. Add to it triple bottom, triple top, quadruple, oh, the crap that's out there, cripes. Guys, I trade crypto. If crypto disappears tomorrow, I can go back to being a full-time professional trader in other markets. Now, what differentiates me from others? I don't think others in the crypto space could go and do the same thing. I'm not speaking for everybody. I'm speaking from what I believe to be my truth because of what I've seen from other people. And I'm not here to tell. I'm here to teach. And I'm here to, uh, to try and gain your trust in my way of thinking because it is a damn sight easier and it comes with objective ways of thinking and that's how you're going to make your money as a trader now this point here is the circles trend changes and i i got to be honest once again this is very very difficult to do but i want you to have a go at this i want you to point out the point at which you see an uptrend and a downtrend come about and it's going to be difficult it is because there's no way of zooming in and zooming out. There is no crosshairs or anything like that. But I would like you to have a go. I'll give you about a minute. I want you to circle, for example, right? Oh, that's my pen, not my actual pen. Um, okay, so let me show you one. Here, higher low. And then when it breaks through there, here, it's a higher high. Yeah, look. That means that's a higher low. And then this is a higher high. They come in all different shapes and sizes. Over to you. Have a go.
Okay. It's tough. I, I've said it a thousand times. I won't, I won't apologize anymore. <laughs> There's a lot of them. Look, we go here. That's an uptrend through there. All right. You can look at that as somewhat of a reversal as well. We just, I'm trying to get you to connect all the dots. When it breaks down, we get a lower high. When it breaks up, it's, look, it's a pretty tough one to do. So I won't make you do it again. Okay. Going through here. And like I say, I, I would normally go through here in a lot more detail. But the, the bottom line is I'm going to be able to show you in live scans uh, in other things as well. It's going to make it a heck of a lot easier. And I just think that it's much better for me to show you in real time uh, and to, to, to punch out a number of these bullet points that have been much more difficult because we've got a static chart and something you can't work with. I will make it clear, you will know what to do. And if you don't, well, then you will ask me because I'm hoping as intense as I get sometimes, I do care and I will answer your questions. So that is us for part one. And I will say, I do apologize for going over in time. I, I you know, I, I love what I do guys. <laughs> And I, I really, I really try hard. <laughs> I really, really, really try hard to get through to you. We've covered part one. Next week, we're going to go into more of this price action mastery. Understanding the ingredients that will come together to create that chocolate cake recipe from which we can then learn to implement ourselves from there. Risk and money management follows from there. Now, guys, look, I, I really, really hope that this has been beneficial for many of you. This will be your first ever time, um, I guess, hearing from me or being involved in, in what I do. Um, I, I thank you for the kind words that are coming through. I do appreciate that very, very much. Um, I'm also very open to, to learning to be better for you. Um, if there's certain things you'd like me to do better, look, I, like, I have no ego here. <laughs> My objective is to help. It's to, it's to give what I have in my head to you uh, and articulate that message in a way that you understand. And that's why I do use a lot of stories and analogies because it, well, it comes naturally to me, but I think it does connect people um, with, with what can be sometimes a boring subject. Uh, so I try and spice it up a little bit, uh, but also something that more importantly than being entertaining, it actually gets through to you. So I appreciate your time very much. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this and, and don't forget Thursday night at 6 p.m. I'll be doing a market scan through some of the products on the gate exchange. And yes, thank you, Paul. I, uh, I will be going fishing and um, I will smash the food and uh, I'll let you know on Thursday how I went. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Once again, if you do wish to share this link, uh, tradercob.com forward slash gate hyphen IO with any friends or family, then please do feel free to do so. You will be let know of the recordings one way or another. And if you can't find where to find that, please do jump on my website, tradercob.com. There is a little chat box in the bottom right hand corner. Tomorrow from about midday, the Australian Eastern daytime, I will have that link available for you. Have a fantastic night. It's been an absolute honor and pleasure uh, to take you through this. I want to say thank you to gate.io uh, for, for putting me in a position where I am able to uh, spread my word, my joy and my, um, you know, what I do. I, I really love it. And um, I'm really looking forward to working with you guys over the next few weeks. Take care and have a fantastic night. If you have any health, mental health issues, call your buddies and please do pick up the phone and call your friends at the same time because you never know what people are going through. It's been a tough year. All we can do is look after each other and be friendly. So please do that. Good night.